The Kings win round one of the preseason freeway faceoff. More importantly, there was good things to take away regarding the Kings' power play, forward Gabe Velarde, goalie Jonathan Quick, and more. We break it down next on this episode of Locked on LA Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. We are at 697, 697 subscribers at last check. Our goal was 600 by the end of September. We obviously met that goal and I want to see if we get to 700 by the end of October and we're going to smash that. So uh, thank you so much for your support of the YouTube channel and of course the podcast as well. Um, let's keep it going and, uh, let's see if we can, well, we're probably going to be over 700 by the time you actually watch this. So, uh, let's see if we can get to 800 by the start of the regular season, which is coming up next Tuesday. Uh, my name is Eddie Garcia. As you probably know, I'm your host of locked on LA Kings, whether you're listening for the first time or watching for the first time, or you've been around since I've taken over the channel. Good to talk to you again, as we get ready to start the regular season very soon. Uh, as far as a little bit about me, I have worked in sports media for almost 30 years. The past 20 plus years, I've been at the Fox Sports Radio Network, where I'm a co-host, sidekick reporter, and NHL insider. Also co-host of the Puck Podcast, a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 16 years. And of course, a passionate LA Kings fan for the past 30 years. We are eight days away from the LA Kings season opener, October 11th, against the Vegas Golden Knights at Crypto.com Arena. But we're still playing preseason games, and in their fourth of seven preseason games this season the kings knocked off the ducks 2-1 sunday night and the best news is by all accounts the kings came out of this 100 healthy uh if this game uh, was any indication of what we're going to see on opening night um, we did see uh several players um especially on the forward side 12 forwards to be exact um that are likely going to be in the starting lineup for opening night for the la kings um we also had um, three other players that are realistically competing for a roster spot on opening night. Um, we had the new top line intact of Andre Kopitar centering Adrian Kempe and Kevin Fiala. We had two thirds of the third and fourth lines playing together with Arthur Kaliev playing along with Alex Iafalo. And we had Blake Lazat centering a line that also had Brendan Lemieux on it. Uh, the other forwards were guys looking to make the opening night roster. Jared Anderson Dolan, Rasmus Kupari, Gabe Velarde, and Samuel Fergimo, uh, the only other player that really was in the lineup uh, on Sunday that's not expected to be playing for the LA Kings this season is TJ Tynan, who centered one of the other lines. We'll touch on him a little bit in just a second. Uh, on defense, we had um, six blue liners, of course, that played on Sunday, um, and uh, three are going to be starters on opening night for sure. Um, the other two, there's other, other two others that could be uh, in the starting lineup as well. Uh, we saw the top pairing of Drew Doughty and Mikey Anderson. Uh, we also saw Sean Walker uh, out there as well as Alex Edler. Now, they did not play together, um, but we did see youngsters Brant Clark and Jordan Spence uh, playing with the veterans Walker and Edler. Of course, Clark could make the opening night lineup with Spence likely starting the season in Ontario. More on that coming up in a second. Um, so again, 10 of the 18 skaters that played on Sunday should be in the starting lineup on opening night. It could be as high as 13 of the 18 skaters that played on Sunday, uh, in the opening lineup. Uh, Jonathan quick, by the way, played the entire game in net. Matt Falalta was the backup. We'll talk more about that in a second, but let's start by looking at some of the takeaways from Sunday's game. And we will start up front with the Fords, uh, the Kopitar line continues to develop chemistry. I am very confident that this is going to be a very good line this coming season, that it's going to live up to the expectations and give the Kings a very solid top number one line, which they haven't really had uh, in a while. Um, that top line also has three of the four forwards that are on the Kings number one power play unit. And the power play looked very good. I thought against the ducks, uh, as was pointed out, if you watch the broadcast, new Kings assistant coach, Jim Hiller has Andre Kopitar playing on the left side with the power play looking to go mainly through Adrian Kempe playing on the right side. 
Um, he's setting up at that right face off dot, and uh, Drew pa- Drew Doughty is at the point for the number one power play unit. Um, if Kempe gets an opportunity, it looks like he is obviously been given the green light to fire at any point. Um, and if he isn't, uh, doesn't feel like he's got a good shot, he'll simply feed it back Doughty at the point, uh, and they'll keep working it around until Kempe has that good shot. That's kind of their first option. Um, you've got uh, Kevin Viala and Gabe Velarde. Gabe Velarde seeing time on the number one power play unit, interchanging between the side of the net and then the high slot, looking for openings to get a pass or to provide a screen on a point shot or also to be there for a rebound as well. For Adrian Kempe, he scored his second goal of the preseason on Sunday to tie up the game. Um, Both of his goals in this preseason have come on the power play. um, And also the second power play unit scored the game-winning goal in the Kings 2-1 victory. Um, Basically, the second power play unit looking to do the same thing as the first with Arthur Kaliev playing the role of Adrian Kempe at that right face-off dot. Um, The the power play uh, for the second unit, though, wasn't quite as set up as the Kempe goal on the first power play unit. It was a little bit more of a broken play with TJ Tynan getting it over to Arthur Kaliev, but Arthur Kaliev showing off that NHL above average NHL shot that he has and putting it into the back of the net. Uh, so uh, good signs to see both of the power play units uh, getting a goal in this one in that 2 1 win over the Ducks. Um, also, um, of the Kings' seven goals this preseason, Four have come with the man advantage, so good to see that the power play is clicking. Um, that having been said, the Kings have only scored seven goals in their four uh, preseason games so far, so not exactly lighting it on fire. But then again, the defense is also doing very well and holding their opponents uh, to only a goal or two. So um, translate, we're seeing low-scoring close games so far in the preseason uh, for the LA Kings. Um, but uh, I'm seeing encouraging signs that the power play is going to be better this season. Um, it's it's hard to imagine that the addition of Kevin Fiala and having Drew Doughty back, hopefully healthy for a full season, wouldn't be enough alone to boost the Kings from 27th a year ago out of 32 teams on the power play. But uh, I, I like I really like what I saw with the Kings power play uh, in the game on Sunday against the Ducks. I've mentioned it more than a few times that I think that this is a big season for forward Gabe Velarde. And I'm happy to say it looks like he has um, completely understood the opportunity that is in front of him and is looking to seize it. Uh, Velarde, of course, a former first-round pick back in 2017, uh, has yet to show the consistency that you need to be a regular NHL player at this point. Um, But uh, I'm seeing good signs from him so far this preseason. That, of course, with Victor Arbitson likely to miss the start of the regular season, Um, The Kings looking for someone to fill that slot. And I think initially we talked about it. They gave uh, Samuel Fagimo a look there. Um, He's been just okay. He hasn't really stood out at all. Um, So he hasn't really done uh, too much with that first opportunity. Velarde, meanwhile, uh, I think he's showing that he wants that spot and uh, and that he realizes it well uh, as well, that this is a critical time in his career if he wants it to continue with the LA Kings. Um, he's been active. He's been aggressive around the net. Uh, he's been pretty strong on the four check um, in the first game against the ducks. He, he got, a, or I should say in this game against the ducks, um, he did get a lot of power play time with the first unit. So that's certainly a, a vote of encouragement from head coach Todd McClellan that uh, he's a guy that can contribute and uh, be in that role. Um, so uh, he and Kevin Fiala looked pretty good together uh, playing on that first power play unit. Um, so three preseason games to go, um, but I do think it's pretty clear that Gabe Velarde has the advantage at this point over Samuel Fugimo for that second line winger position in place of Victor Arbitson, um, if he is not ready to go for the start of the regular season. So good signs from Gabe Velarde so far, I think this preseason, hopefully he can continue that through the rest of the preseason and, uh, be ready to go in the regular season, whether it's in Victor Arbitson's spot or playing somewhere else down the lineup as needed. I did want to mention Alex Iafalo, um, who has been moved from the top line from last season to the third line. And I really think Iafalo is going to be an exceptional third line, line player. Um, he never really fit in, on that top line. Um, truth is, he's probably more of a second line player, but I think he's going to really excel on that third line. Uh, the expectations and the pressure to produce aren't as high. Uh, I think that he'll be much more comfortable in that role without those expectations Um, In the game against the Ducks, he made a couple of real nice plays um, helping to set up Jordan Spence 
for a scoring chance and ended up drawing a penalty. So I, I really think Alex Ayafalo is going to be an asset on that third line and, and do some good things as far as the depth scoring goes for the Kings. I think the only forward spot that's up for grabs at this point, again, while Victor Arvidsson is out, um, is likely going to go to Jarrett Anderson Dolan. Uh, he continues to be noticeable all over the ice on the forecheck. Um, he still has not gotten on the scoreboard yet, um, but I think that he has the edge for that final roster spot over guys like Rasmus Kupari, Samuel Fugimo, um, Leas Anderson, and Tyler Madden. But there are still three games left in the preseason. Still some time for one of those other players to maybe do something special and catch the attention of the coaching staff and of management. But I would say at this point, my opinion is that uh, Jared Anderson Dolan probably has that final forward roster spot um, at this point. We shall see if that is uh, going to change at some point, though. Um, one final note um, about, uh, I wanted to mention TJ Tynan. And we had an email about this um, a few weeks ago at the start of training camp. And if you don't know it, TJ Tynan, um, he was centering the uh, Cali of I follow line in this game on Sunday. He is the reigning and no pun intended two time defending AHL MVP with the Ontario reign. Um, he was the MVP of the AHL the last two seasons. And it was asked by one of our listeners, viewers, um, why not give him the fourth line center position over somebody like a Blake Lazat? Uh, the thinking is that, hey, this guy is the MVP of the AHL. Surely he's good enough to be a fourth line NHL player. And he probably is, to be honest with you. But TJ Tynan is 30 and Blake Lazat is 24. And they probably give you about the same as far as production goes. I think Lazat might be a little bit more of an energy guy, which is what they're looking for on that fourth line. And so, you know, TJ Tynan knows what he is. He's an AHL player. Um, and even though he's had great success at the AHL level, it's still the AHL. Um, if you recall last year, Martin Furk, who was a fan favorite with the LA Kings fans, um, he was in the running for MVP as well. And he's barely holding on as an NHL player. He signed with Detroit, no Chicago, uh, this off season or no, it was Detroit. I think anyway, uh, Martin Furk is still kicking around the NHL, but he's just hanging on and, He's an older player as well. Even though the num the numbers are there, um, I, I think the Kings are looking to invest more in the younger players um, and get more out of them. And a guy like TJ Tynan is, like I said, he knows what he is. He's a, a, a veteran in the AHL to provide leadership and, of course, production as well because they want to have success uh, at the AHL level. People are still paying their hard-earned money down there in Ontario to watch this team play. So you want to have success, but... He, he kind of is what he is. Uh, I just don't think the Kings, and I think he understands it as well. He's just not a guy who fits into their plans. There's younger guys who can develop maybe into something more that have, you know, are given that opportunity because of TJ Tynan's age. They know what he is. He's not going to really get any better than what he is, even though it's very good at the AHL level. But um, if you're just curious about that, that's, that's kind of where TJ Tynan is as far as his career. Uh, we need to talk about the defense from this past Sunday. And yes, that includes more talk about Brant Clark. But first, the numbers don't lie. In the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe home security to protect their home. You don't earn that trust of that many people without doing something right. Simply Safe protects with cutting edge security technology powered by a 24 7 professional monitoring agent who always has your back. Simply Safe is easy to use, and you can control your system from your phone with the app. You can watch crystal clear HD live stream of your security cameras or, or a wide variety of high tech sensors. Uh, Simply Safe's agents will call you the moment a threat is detected and dispatch police or first responders in an emergency, even if you're not home or can't be reached. Simply Safe blankets your home and in protection with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door. There's even hazard sensors that instantly detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. You can save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. That's S I M P L I S A F dot com and uh, learn more. There is no safe like Simply Safe. So the Kings have been very good defensively this preseason, only allowing seven goals in four preseason games so far. And one of those games went overtime as well. Uh, in Sunday's game against the Ducks, the Kings had only one breakdown, and it was in the first minute of the game 
after a turnover, Kings defenseman Mikey Anderson got beat to the back door and the Ducks' Rocco Grimaldi tapped in a goal. Um, and not to be too hard on Anderson, but that can't happen. Um, Anderson is on the ice because of his defensive play. And I get it. No one is perfect. Everyone makes mistakes, even Drew Doughty and Andre Kopitar. But again, for a player whose who's main purpose on the ice is for his defensive skills, he cannot miss that read and then get beat on the back door for a tap-in goal. So that was not on Jonathan Quick. That was on Mikey Anderson. Um, but from there, the Kings played very well defensively um, in every other situation. Um, they did not um, really allow the Ducks to get any um, – looks in the high danger areas they not they did not get any really good scoring chances the kings were four for four on the penalty kill as well um i thought drew dowdy looks like he is in pretty much regular season form at this point coming back from wrist surgery and it was great to see sean walker on the ice in game action for the first time in over a year following that serious injury to both his acl and his mcl in his knee so um the defense i thought looked very good and has looked good so far in this preseason and young standout defenseman Brant Clark did play in this game as he has played in all four preseason games at this point. And I'm no longer looking for reasons for him to stay. I'm looking for reasons why he should not stay. And he did have one turnover on the power play, but it only resulted in the Ducks being able to clear the zone. And that was it. Uh, otherwise, a very strong game from Brant Clark again. Um, I think the Kings are also now looking for reasons to not keep him at this point. People keep saying that he needs to go back to juniors and work on his defensive game, but really tell me the play you've seen this preseason where he made a bad play defensively, when he made a bad turnover that led to a scoring chance, where he's pinched at the wrong time, where he's held on to the puck too long. I, I thought he also showed some nice moments when he was playing alongside the Kings' top line as well. Uh, he's just as creative and can think offensively like guys like Andre Kopitar, Kevin Fiala, and Adrian Kemp, and I know that's very high praise. Um, I thought Todd McClellan had a great quote um, about Brant Clark. And here's what he had to say uh, about Brant Clark. Quote, he doesn't lack confidence and he doesn't portray arrogance. That's a pretty good quality to have, end quote. I think that's a perfect description of his game. Again, he doesn't lack confidence, but he doesn't portray arrogance. Um, and he's smart and yet he's skilled. And it's a great combination. I thought that was an awesome quote. From Todd McClellan, um, we're going to see if it continues. He still has some games left, and and by all accounts, he's going to play in all the preseason games. And as I have been saying all along, and I'm sure I'm not the only one saying it, he's going to get that nine-game audition at the NHL level, and that's really going to be the litmus test for him if they feel like he can stay in the NHL or not. Everything he's done to this point is great, and we talked about it a, few, a, a, a week ago or so. The foundation for Brant Clark for him to make the NHL, what was it going to be? A good showing in rookie camp, he had that. A good showing in training camp, he's had that. A good showing in the preseason games, he's had that. The final step is a good showing in the NHL games when the regular season counts and that nine-game window that he can play in before they have to either send it back to junior or keep him on the NHL roster. And so far, he's checked off all the boxes. So we'll see. It's a great luxury to have. I think the Kings are happy with their defensive core at this point. They're just trying to figure out, you know, if you've got so many defensemen on the right side, where who's going to fit on that left side? Maybe that means that Alex Edler gets that final pairing on the left side, Walker on the second pairing, and obviously Mikey Anderson on the top pairing with Brant Clark playing on that right side um, with Dowdy, um, with Roy, and then you've got Sean Dursey as well. We'll talk about him in just a minute, but uh, Brant Clark's making it very difficult on the coaching staff and management, and that's exactly what they want. So I don't know if it's going to be this season for Brant Clark, but I, I don't know how you're not excited if you're a Kings fan with the way that he has developed so far. And if it's not this year, it's going to be very soon, and he's going to be a great player going forward. Uh, we are uh, going to talk about Jonathan Quick. Has he wrapped up the number one goalie job already? We will discuss that in just a second. But first, don't forget that Locked On NHL's podcast has you covered for all your league-wide NHL talk with a rotating cast of local hosts from Locked On NHL's channel, breaking down the biggest stories in hockey five days a week. Subscribe for free on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. So Jonathan Quick uh, started on Sunday, played the entire game. Uh, he stopped 24 of 25 shots on goal, and as we mentioned, the only goal he allowed was in the opening minute, and that was not his fault. Mikey Anderson did not have his back on that one. Uh, Quick has allowed two goals on 43 shots so far this preseason. That's in a game and a half worth of action and has looked very solid. 
with Cal Peterson's status still kind of being up in the air and with Quick playing so well, I cannot imagine that at this point, Jonathan Quick will not be the opening night starter and the number one goalie as the season starts. Now, Cal Peterson is back at practice. I would expect him to start at least one of the next three preseason games to get him ready for the regular season and make sure that physically he is ready. If you don't recall, he started the second preseason game against Vegas, lasted one period, then came out because he felt something. Reports are that it is a lower body injury. But again, he is back at practice, not showing any effects, but you know they want to get him at least one game. Uh, to make sure that everything feels right when the live bullets are flying. So, But at this point, again, it is hard to believe that Jonathan Quick has not earned the number one goalie job uh, and also is the best option because we're not exactly sure what's going on with Cal Peterson physically at this point. Speaking of injuries, we do have some injury notes to pass along. Forward Victor Arvidsson continues to skate and by all accounts is at least on schedule, if not maybe a little bit ahead of schedule. For returning to the ice as he comes back from off-season back surgery for the herniated disc, uh, I believe he is still wearing the non-contact jersey and practice the red jersey. Um, they're saying that there is a chance he might play in the Kings' final preseason game on the 8th, but all indications are he's probably not going to be ready for the start of the season, and I think the, the Kings are erring on the side of caution, which makes a ton of sense. They're not going to rush him back because they really don't need to. They want to make sure he's going to be available for the bulk of the season and more importantly at the end of the season when he wasn't available last year. So they're going to play it smart and they're going to play it safe and they absolutely should. So again, Victor Arvidsson appears to be on track. Everything is looking positive, no setbacks. Um, but I think it is probably prudent for the Kings at this point to start him slow. And I think it also, like we said, I think the Kings want to see what Gabe Velarde can offer as well. So it's kind of a win-win. You've got Victor Arvidsson. You're telling him, take your time. There is no rush. We're going to be overly cautious about this. And in the meantime, we get a decent look at who I believe it'll be on the second line in place of Arvidsson, Gabe Velarde, to see what he can do in a in what is a big year for him. And so far, so good for him in the preseason. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, defenseman Sean Dursey should see action in a preseason game soon, perhaps as early as tomorrow against the Ducks. Uh, also, Quentin Byfield has missed practice because of an illness. He's listed as day-to-day. But again, just an illness, so he should be okay. Coming up on Tuesday, we will have a preview of the Kings Ducks' second of three preseason meetings. That's coming up in Anaheim on Tuesday night. That is going to be on Bally Sports if you want to watch it. I think it's also on the NHL Network as well. But we'll be previewing that game. Um, also want to remind you, if you want to keep up to date on what's going on with the LA Kings and of course this show, please follow us on Twitter. We are at locked on LA Kings. If you want to send me an email with anything going on with the show or with the Kings, uh, any questions, any comments, you can send them to locked on Eddie at gmail.com. That's E D D I E locked on Eddie at gmail.com. And I started an inst Instagram page. Uh, as I get out to games, be taking pictures and posting them on there as well. And that is at locked on LA Kings. Thank you for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked on NHL. Locked on experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast of all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world that is Locked on NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast. Again, thank you so much for listening. I am Eddie Garcia. This has been Locked on LA Kings. And as always, we remind you to close out the show. Go Kings, go.